You go and pray on this thing that is so the spiritual. <laughs> I'm live, Pastor. <laughs> on the spiritual, bud. <laughs> Good evening, everybody. Good evening. Good evening. Welcome to Talks with Yori. I'm so sorry for the late start, but my name is Yori Garrick, for those of you who don't know me. And today I'm joined with my pastor, Pastor Al Miller. Pastor Al is the senior pastor for Fellowship Tabernacle. And it is my privilege to have him here with us this evening to talk about the subject on seating the root of rejection. And before we start, I want us to pray to invite the Holy Spirit into our conversation. Pastor was teasing me that was spiritual. You may get it from Pastor. <laughs> so let us pray. Father, we thank you for your goodness to us. We thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness, Almighty God. Lord, we invite you in to take complete control of this conversation, O oh God. We ask, O oh Lord, that you would speak. Holy Spirit, as we avail ourselves to you, Almighty God, as conduits, O oh God, you speak through us, O oh God. You give Pastor Al wisdom, give him direction, Almighty God. Give us direction, Lord God, for how you would want this conversation to flow, Almighty God. Give him a spirit, a spiritual download, a new download, Almighty God, on this topic of rejection, Almighty God. And I thank you for those lives that will be transformed as a result of this conversation, Lord. I thank you, Lord, for those who are on tonight who will watch it back at a later time i thank you lord that healing has come almighty god and that lord your will is being done in our lives and i thank you that the root of rejection is being unseated even now in jesus name amen so pastor yes my love before we get <laughs> into the conversation i just want you to know that monique is monitoring the comments tonight so she'll feed any comments to me on any questions that may come in throughout the course of our conversations. If you see me looking at my phone from time to time, not ignoring you, I just making sure that we cover all our bases. Well, if you ignore me, I just feel rejected and then feel bad. So it will just give life and license to what we're saying. So I try and feel rejected badly when you do that. <laughs> and I would never want to reject you, my pastor. <laughs> all right, but seriously, no. Pastor, rejection is something that all of us seem to go through. You know, when I was when I was even posting the flyer for this conversation, I remember the scripture about Jesus in Isaiah 53, 3, where he talked about that he was a man of sorrows and he was rejected. He, he came to his own, his own rejected him. You know, and so even Jesus, as he walked the earth, was rejected. And all of us, from time to time, you know, some of us, I was also saying, you know, from the womb, some of us have been, been rejected. We've experienced it, you know, where we weren't wanted from, you know, we were plant seed, seeds in our mother's womb. Some of us, mm -hmm. different relationships. They're just different things that happen to us along our lifetime where we, where we experience this whole thing of rejection. And, you know, when we talk about it, because we talk about different things at church, you know, there are different things that come up. And one of the main things that comes up a lot of the time as a root cause of different issues is the whole thing of rejection and so I thought it important for us to have the conversation so we could understand what rejection is so we can be able to identify it and really just to distance ourselves from it because it's something that happens it's I want to say it's almost like par for the course it's like natural for us to be rejected you know and but it can impact us in so many diverse ways and i want us to be able to identify it and deal with it so that we can have healthy relationships and we can mm -hmm. be healthy moving forward because it's so yeah. impactful and you know we we respond out of rejection we respond out of the fear of, of rejection sometimes we don't want to make a move we don't want to say certain things because we're afraid that we'll be rejected and so it's a very important conversation. So I looked up the meaning of the word rejection past and I want us to talk about it. And rejection is really the act of dismissal of a person or a thing. You know, the person or thing is dismissed as inadequate or unacceptable. And so pastor, tell me, why do you think rejection is such a pervasive issue for us as humans? Wow, wow. It is, I would agree with you, Yuri, that it is a problem and a very significant problem for, I don't, let, let me not say most people, for all people, mm -hmm. all people. 
it is a matter of how we deal with it, or perhaps I should say first that how how far down we are on the on the scale of rejection is not whether we are we are rejected or feel rejection. Mm -hmm. It is the, the the degree to which we allow that rejection to affect us. And so let's just back up a little bit, and I think it perhaps will begin to grasp why rejection is such a pervasive problem for us as people. And the fact is that rejection is common to man. Mm. It's common to man, all of us, ever since Adam failed. As a matter of fact, rejection was before Adam. Rejection was what happened when, when Lucifer rebelled against God. And because of this rebellion, it created the war in heaven, the conflict. And as a result, God had to put him out of heaven. So that's really where we see the root and the base of rejection. Yes. And we may come back to this earlier, but that also tells us something about rejection because reje rejection therefore was the result of the iniquity that was found in him and yeah. how he dealt with iniquity and the manifestation of that iniquity in him, in Lucifer, was pride so that it's beginning to let us be able to log in on part of what rejection, what produces it, so that we can better know how to fight it. So we can bear that in mind and we can go back to it later on because it's going to be important. Right. But then he was cast out of heaven. He was rejected. And so that's where we see rejection. So now when God created man, Adam, and he plays Adam in the garden. Adam never knew rejection. Right. Adam had fellowship and communion with God because Adam lived in an atmosphere of the perfect love of God. And again, that tells us something about rejection. He was in an atmosphere of the perfect love of God. So he had no sense of rejection no feelings of rejection, but when he was put to the test and then when he disobeyed God, then he was put out of the garden because he was tempted for, by whom? By Satan, who was rejected. Yes. Because you see, so that Satan wanted him on his side. So therefore, Adam then once he did, he and Eve was put out of the garden, so they were rejected. So all children of Adam was born in rejection. So all of us suffer the rejection. So it is the place of beginning and the place from which we must move from rejection. And we have to talk about what are we moving to? Yes. See, so we have to move from this place of rejection. So it is pervasive. And I would want to say then that when we were born, if as if you could look on a platform mm -hmm. and say that we were all born on a platform of rejection, all of us, that's the base, the foundation on which we were birthed. But the degree of rejection is dependent on the how we were socialized, the um, level of our socialization. If yes. we were to say then, let's use a simple thing. Let's say that you were on the minor side of life and let's say the lowest is a hundred mm -hmm. or we could make it a thousand. But if we say the lowest is a thousand, so we are at, oh no, a hundred, let's stick with a hundred. We are yeah. minus a hundred. And if we are minus, if we are minus a hundred, then it does mean that it just, the, 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 where we are 
on the minus side depends on our socialization, whether we're minus 20, minus 30, or minus 50, or for some people, the way on the worst end of rejection, they are at minus 80, minus 90. And so the whole of that gap of the minus side of life has to be filled. And that's the challenge mm -hmm. because we go on to try to live, but we are living on the minor side of life and that's negative. And right. so it only produces negative responses. So we have negative emotions, negative feelings, negative relationships, negative contacts, everything becomes negative as long as we continue to operate on the platform or on the base, the foundation, if I'm, that's a, perhaps a good word, on yes. the foundation of rejection. rejection. Once we're on that foundation, we are going to experience the problem, negative, negative, negative. Mm. So that's kind of the origins, I think, of rejection and why it is so pervasive in all of our lives. Yeah. So we have to fight to overcome it to Jesus himself because what? He was rejected. <laughs> man. So all men re face rejection, yeah. but now it is how do we deal with it? How yeah. do we allow it to affect us? It right. was never... Well, put it this way, God does not want us rejected, so therefore there must be some options because rejection is negative and we were not created to live and to operate on the negative side of life. We are to operate on the positive side of life. So you would say then, Pastor, because Lucifer experienced that rejection from God, he wanted Adam, and then because Adam was no supposed to be setting the setting things in order jesus i mean god created adam and eve to set the thing in order with that lucifer had had messed up then correct so because and lucifer, replacing him and replacing lucifer right yes. so because the rejection it comes with all of these different feelings so it comes with yes. the insecurity and it comes with the jealousy and it comes with all of these negative emotions and so because Absolutely. he experienced that from god and here is now this replacement. So you're replacing me with Adam. I am going to make him feel it. So he came and he tempted Adam, um, Adam and Eve to sin yeah. against God because he knew that once they disobeyed, the consequence would be their rejection as well because God is holy. Absolutely. And it would now push them on his side. On his side. <laughs> yes. And so he would now become the controller. Mm. So that the, that platform or foundation of rejection, he is the boss yes. of that foundation, you see. So anything that is developed, built, or born on mm -hmm. his platform, he believes he has a legal right to whatever is on his foundation. Yes. So then he can attack us at will. And some of the stuff you mentioned and all the other negatives, that's what lets in all that negative into us because we are on Satan's platform, here on his foundation. And so he says, I have legal right to come in and mess you up, let you feel sad, make you miserable because it is opposite perhaps it's a good time to say it's because like we say then that because Adam was in an environment of love then he mm -hmm. felt no rejection because mm -hmm. rejection is to not feel love wanted valued accepted all, all, all of that kind of stuff and right. so it's the opposite it, it really then almost turns to be the opposite of feeling loved and wanted and accepted and lucifer rules that area of our lives and that's why we have to fight it rightly and absolutely if not it continues to be a major problem with us and you notice what it affects our relationships yes <laughs> it's our relationships you know our personal life and yes. our relationships so that makes it critical yes when I was doing some research on the topic, Pastor, 
interestingly, I saw where it says psychologically, the same, the same brain receptors that go off when we feel physical pain, like if I cut myself or if I fall, are the same receptors that go off when we experience rejection. I thought that was very telling, yes. you know, because it's so hurtful when you're rejected, especially by people who you believe should care for you, should value you, should appreciate you, should want you around. When you experience the fact that they don't want you, they don't value you, they don't want you around, it, it hurts just like a physical cut. How do we... And, and you know, the, you, you, hear, you hear a lot of things. You hear like rejection is redirection. Rejection is God's protection. And we hear all of these cliches that are true, that are true, you know, because, you know, when you're rejected by somebody else, there is always someone that will accept you. So there is truth to it. But even though there is that truth, how do we get to that place, though, where we, we really embrace that it is God's protection? It is you know, God's redirection, because in the process of being redirected is the pain that I have to face. Mm -hmm. And it yeah. impacts how I relate to other people. How do we well, get you to first, that? You first, uh, we, we first have to ask or say to ourselves, why the, why the pain? Why the pain? Why is why? it such an emotional pain as it is a physical pain? Mm -hmm. And I believe that that is because we are created to be like God. And God is love. Yes. Love is relational. So we are relational beings. So anything that affects our relationship affects us. And because we are relational beings rooted in love, created to love and to be loved, whatever touches that area is touching at the very core of your being. Yes. And so you, you're going to feel it. We're going to cry out whenever we feel that rejection because that's our life. Because life is about relationships. relationships. So whatever affects relationships hits us at the very center of our of our being. So I think that's why. Just just repeat for me again the question you are asking. I was or you saying, asked just before. I yeah, I was saying you know because we hear we we it is so painful and we hear that it you know rejection is God's protection and redirection oh, yes, and all right. of that. But how do we get to that place of really embracing that as truth? Because we are feeling yeah. this pain. And right. I don't think it makes sense that we, we try and sugarcoat it and pretend like we're not in pain. We're feeling the pain. Mm -hmm. How do we mm -hmm. get past it? How oh, we get past it. Do you believe that the part of that comes from first, let me say, because rejection is this negative side of life that creates all, all of this pain. When we are on the negative side of life, it is, and we are feeling this, it's because we are now reaching for that which we think we are missing, mm. we are lacking. And what is it we are reaching for? It's really the upper, the upper end of that scale or the opposite end, which is acceptance. Yeah. So it is a striving to be accepted so that when we are accepted, we feel loved, which is what we, we want. We feel loved and wanted and special. So it is acceptance that we are looking for. So if acceptance is what we desire deeply so that we feel loved and cared for and supported and valued, etc., then to begin to deal with the issue of rejection is to grapple with the issue of acceptance. But what we are doing, because we were rejected by God because of our sin and what it caused, then what we need is acceptance. But that now is a um, way that's going to affect how we think, etc., Right. So because acceptance is what we are striving for, we now have to develop a mindset that 
a mindset that says or, or recognize that we have been accepted. Mm -hmm. So we are there striving to get acceptance. That's what we are looking for. That's why we are going through what we go through and feel all the pain because we are, re we are rejected. Now, when we are accepted, we no longer feel the pain of rejection because you now feel valued and you're at peace with yourself. So it is, I like to say that um, acceptance is what I call the lifeline. So when you stretch up trying to get a hold of acceptance, that's your lifeline. And when you hold on to it, you deep breathe. <sighs> Yeah. I now feel loved, I feel wanted, I feel valued, and it is important. But how does that happen? Ideally for us, it happens in little ways when people around you make you feel good. And they, what we would say, they big you up and they adore you like family and friends and so on, then you get the feeling of acceptance and you feel love and it is not as painful. When you have it is when you come across those persons now who don't treat you as these few people you like or who like you treat yes. you, but they always putting you down, they're letting you know that you can't do this, you don't match up, you don't have the gift, you don't have the ability, and all of those thoughts begin to fill the minds, and so our anxiety level and fear level and panic really just begins to overtake us. Yes. But this is why the beauty and I know that all of our, all of your viewers may not particularly buy into this or fully understand it, but nonetheless, I've got to say it is that which works the best. Yes. It's really when you come into a relationship with God yes. so that you are now born again mm. of the spirit of God. But you are now born again. When you are born again, you are born now, not on a rejection foundation has been your history in your first birth. You are now born again on acceptance, on the lifeline. So you are accepted. And it is the truth that we now must begin to believe that I am not living, striving for acceptance. Yes. But I now know I have been accepted. I don't have to prove anything to anybody. Um, I am it. So that now, whereas before, you, why you weren't feeling accepted and so on, is because you placed your value on what you do. It was about performance. So you have to do everything just right and perfectly to satisfy these millions of people in the world. Each of them think differently and have different expectations of us. And if each of them don't just accept us, man, we go berserk because yeah. to be accepted is such a priority. But when you are born again and, you know, build a relationship with Christ and you know something, what? The God who created me. He has accepted me. Now, he says, I have worth and value. So I'm no longer working for value. I am valued. Because what we must now begin to realize, and people who are listening to us and struggling with rejection, part of the answer begins in recognizing that you have value. And your value, this is very important, Yuri, your value is not on what you do. Your value is in who you are. So the fact of your being gives you value. You didn't have to do anything to get it. The fact that you were born a human being in the image and likeness of God with gifts, talents, and abilities, you have worth and value. So somebody who don't value you, they are the ones who have a problem because they don't know value. But you have to know that. You have to believe that in yourself so that you're not intimidated by what people say, by what they do and how they treat you simply because you know the truth and the truth then sets you free. What is the truth? I have worth. I have value. I have been accepted. 
And so now you can rest in that and begin to grow in the world from a position that you are valued, you are of great importance, and that's what gives us the peace of mind. It's what gives us the confidence so that even when we are around people who sometimes don't honor us the way they should, we don't feel negative and feel bad. We can love them anyway because I have enough love inside of me and enough con confidence of who I am and that I'm loved that my need is not dependent on what you give me. I have enough to feed myself and be healthy and strong. It is not dependent upon the views, the image, the welfare of others. It's confidence. And that's the key to begin the process of fighting it, changing the way we think to, act, to find a place of acceptance and latch on to it. Wow, I think that is so important what you just said, Pastor, because, you know, you have, I had the privilege of growing up with my father in the household. And so he was always there, never, ever absent. And so I know of the father's love, but I know a lot of people struggle with, coming even coming into their relationship with God because you, you see God as father but then because of their their earthly father and the relationship that they had or the non-relationship that they had and a lot of rejection that takes place even in the home as a child it is hard for them to make that translation even when they come into the kingdom because they can't identify with this father's love talk to that person pastor who has who, who was rejected even in the home and so you come into the world and you, you're innocent you're a baby you're not and but yes. you're not accepted you're not they don't love you they don't they don't want you they never wanted you you know some some have the experience where their mother tried to abort them and it just yeah. didn't work you know there are so many different things that happen to babies and children and then it, it carries them through their lifetime. I want to talk to those people because, you know, these, these are the issues that come up and that striving for acceptance, you see it manifest in different ways. And so you have the young girls who are looking to men or boys, other, you know, the sexual counterparts to, to feel accepted and feel at love. And so they give themselves away prematurely. And it manifests in many different ways. I want to really zone in on the people who didn't have that acceptance growing up and so it's hard for them even though they might come into a relationship with God and that is what we really are promoting how you deal with it practically when that has been your experience yeah it is it, it it is tough and it, it that's why we need help and dialogue I, I congratulate you with what you are doing here because this is what helps persons and that's why counseling becomes so important in that kind of scenario because persons who suffer with rejection need help to be able to deal with that rejection and yes. so part of what we such a person needs to do certainly to get the kind of help to find the root of their rejection in other words what caused them to feel rejected where did it begin what is the, the you know what what are the seeds of it and begin to pluck it up from the seeds is it because of the lack of father you know or was it because of how i was treated by siblings that carried that inferiority and those feelings in me was it because of a teacher at school like i dealt with someone recently who what became they had fairly good family love but yet when they went to school things that something that the teacher said and then kept on, kept on drilling into this kid that therefore created this feeling this deep sense of rejection a sense of failure and so it created the, the new image that the child formed of themselves negative image and that imagery is then what they have grown up that now they are 35, nearly 40, and is suffering from the wounds of that negative image, not believing in themselves, in their worth and their value. Yes. So I certainly want to say that persons who feel that we and go through that is to say, come on, that information is not true. 
you have worth and value. You must know that your value is not in what you have or what you do. Your value is not in your performance. It's not oh, because but I don't have the gifts like Tom. I don't have the talents and the abilities like some, someone else. Because the world system of chapters into placing value of, or considering ourselves of value based on what we do on our performance. But no, that's not the essence of value. Value is in who you are. And so I say to each person listening, look, you, are, you were made in the image and likeness of God. And when you think about God, what is God like? God is good. God is wise. God has knowledge. God has power. You name all of these. This is how God is. God is love. And therefore, you are who God created you to be. That's who you really are. And therefore, you've got to begin to believe that and accept that I am. Look in the mirror and tell yourself, come on, you are fearfully and wonderfully made. Yeah. Tell yourself, you are beautiful. Your beauty is not comparing yourself to some Coca-Cola shape person bottle shape woman somewhere that's not really where your value comes from your value is in your person in your character you would never have been born if you did not have value so the fact of your being in the world is your evidence that you have value and you do what you do not to be valued, you do what you do because you have worth and value. So it is my worth and value that gives me the capacity to live, just to be able to get up every day and live and talk and communicate and do the things you do. You're telling yourself that, no, you're not like that, you're no good. You are good. Look at what you are doing. Look how you are communicating. Look how you are sharing and you have gotten on. You have made it through life. Life. You have been to school. Some of you have not just been to school. You have been to, to university. You have come out. You are in a good job. Come on. You could never have made it there if you did not have value. You perhaps didn't go that route because that wasn't your heart, but you are skilled. There are things that you can do. You care for people and you are sensitive to the needs of others and you reach out to people that say you have worth. So you've got to believe in your own worth and accept it to be true. And that knowledge of truth and accepting of the truth to be the truth, it's how you will begin to break it. Come on. That's what you need first. It is believing the truth, accepting yourself that you are someone of worth and value created in the image and likeness of God. You need nothing more. Now, we can go on and add things, but that's the essence of it. And I encourage all of your listeners, believe it, believe it, believe it. And so what you have to do practically now is to talk to yourself. You've got talking truth to yourself and keep repeating it. And don't keep stating the negative because we create our world by our words. So if we keep telling ourselves, no, I can't do that. No, I'm not good. No, I'm not like that. I can't. Then you will begin to create it because you are made in the image of like and likeness of God. So it means you have creative power and ability by the words you speak because that's how God created. So you now must begin to speak rightly about yourself. See yourself as how your creator sees you and not what you heard others said about you and keep rehearsing it to yourself until you believe it. So throw out the negative talk about yourself, that negative in image about yourself and fill yourself with that truth Go to persons around you who you know, love you and care and listen to what they say about you. And don't say, no, sir, it is not true. No, 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 no. Why is it that you quickly want to believe 
the things that are negative about you to be true, but you don't want to accept the things that the same, that people who care for you tell you about you that's good. It's because of the enemy of our souls who want to keep us in bondage and to keep us trapped on the platform or on the foundation of rejection to make us fear failure and to let us latch on to our insecurities because they are all fears, because that's what rejection produces. Rejection really highlights the fact of pride and fear. They are the dominant things that flow from a platform of rejection. Because as we said, when we started, that the rejection came about because of the pride that arose in Lucifer. Yes. And when he was rejected, then the fear came in. So pride and fear go together. And so why are we feeling the hurt and the pain when people say stuff about us that's that cause hurt the truth is it's because our own personal pride is rising up and so we feel we have to defend it and we feel bad about it and so on but come on when you take the position of humility and accept the fact that i didn't do anything to be accepted i was just made good <laughs> so if you don't think i am you have a problem not me i was simply designed perfectly and wonderfully look at this piece of craftsmanship look at yourself and affirm it to yourself and the more we affirm it to ourselves over and over and over then we must begin to believe it and that's how we begin to combat those negative feelings yes. that we are thrown at us every day you know and maybe for a little bit too we can practically we kind of keep away for a while from those persons who are only negative and yes. only keep putting you down and throw you down. You can't run away from them because that's not a solution, but really don't imbibe what they are saying. And if you don't have to be around those, you do what one of our local um, comedians say, smile and nod. You know, you just look at them and smile and nod because yeah. you have to talk right to yourself that I'm not what you say I am. I am who God created me to be and believe it. Yes. Pastor, when you were talking, you talked predominantly a while ago about our belief, you know, changing our mindset. But it says to me that somebody has to present that truth to, to us because yes. if I don't, if I'm not exposed to truth, I'll only operate with that thing. And so the question Absolute. came in just now, Pastor, what if the person doesn't know that they need counseling or help? based on the fact that they have accepted their mode of operation as the norm. It's the same question I was saying. Yes. Somebody has to present truth. And so the rejection manifests itself in different ways. And so those of us who have been exposed to truth can see it readily sometimes in others. Yes. So it's for us now, would you agree with me in saying that it's for us who know the truth to present that truth and not to us, not to just... Because sometimes we see it manifesting in other people yes. and we say, oh, them just want attention. Yeah. And we kind of brush them aside instead of being compassionate. What is the root of their gra yeah. gra grasping for that attention? Right. And you're quite right. And what we do, when we behave like that, what we are doing is not helping them. We uh, are rather reinforcing, reinforcing. their rejection. Yes. So we do have a responsibility, each of us, that when we come across persons who have this negative view of themselves and suffering with rejection, they need our affirmation because they have a concluded an image of themselves that they can see because they have said, this is who I am. Yeah. It's going to take a lot of work for somebody who begins to say, no, that's not who you are. That's a mask that you are wearing. Come on, take off that mask because that's not who you are. You were fearfully and wonderfully made. You are precious. You have worth. You have value. If they don't come across anybody who will help them in that way, they will remain 
in that negative mindset and it will only continue to destroy. That's the truth. You know, if they don't find somebody who can help them it, it, or it would mean they would need to read something or see something that awakened them, but they would need some external awakening or if it is internal, they must have a dream one night or somebody tell them. But if there is not something that comes to show that there is another way, they will continue in that and keep wondering why I can't get on with people. Why do I always have relational problems with others? It's because of the insecurities and the fear from the root of rejection that's present in their lives. And so if one is unsure whether or not I have, I have rejection problems, you only need to look at your relationship with others. If you don't have a lot of friends, you are a loner, or you only have one or two persons who you relate to, and you get offended very easily, you always feel pulled up, put down, and you pull away in a corner, you have a serious rejection problem. Yes. If you always think everybody attract me, you know, they are speaking about me and you walk in a room and they go quiet and you say, yeah, it's me the thing. And yeah. you, you have a serious rejection problem that needs help if you're going to become your best self. Yes. It's you necessary. Know, yeah. I have personally experienced that pastor in different ways. And it just, it really took a, it really took a coming to Jesus, you know, ex different experiences along the lifetime. But you see it, you see it in your relationships when the relationships are not working and you are the common denominator in all of these relationships. Right. You mm -hmm. go to work and you have problems at work. You go, you're in the friendships and you have problems in your friendships and in a marriage or whatever. You, and you see the issues in each of these pockets and you are the common denominator. It takes, it takes a real honest look. You have to take a real honest look at That's self. Right. Absolutely. What is happening? What is at the root of why I behave the way I behave? And how do I get the healing from this? Because it's healing that we really, really need. It's healing we need. And the problem, and the unfortunate thing is the subtlety of the enemy of our souls. Yes. He wants us to think that the problem them. is them, <laughs> is how me. they're treating me. Yes. And if they, did, if they do that, and so we keep pointing the finger out there, no. Like you said, if all my relationships at work, at home, in the, at school, in, the, in, my, in my business, I constantly having these issues with people and not happy with life, unfulfilled, and I'm a loner, and all of that on me or I'm always in conflict with people, we must stop and begin to face the common denominator is me. So therefore, I have to look at me. Because the thing is, we can't change other people. And we can't change other people, how they treat us. We have no control over that. What we have control over is ourselves. And if we work the process of working the change in ourselves and begin to see ourselves differently, it is amazing how we begin to change how other people perceive us. And the few who will continue their negativity, it will have little effect on us that we can relate to them even if they have a problem relating to us because we have moved from a minus quantity into a plus quantity. And that brings me into a safety position, a protection. It is because, not just because the Lord watching over me, it's because I have changed the way that I think and how I see myself and I'm embracing love and living in the love that I'm embracing. So therefore now I'm more confident in me and I realize that I have something to give. And so I'm now on the giving end because love is about giving. Yes. And so now I'm giving to my world and I'm engaging with it because I have an internal confidence 
that was birthed out of my accepting me for who I am and dealing with that reality. Yeah. You said it a while ago, Pastor, but I want you to talk about it a little bit more. You said that sometimes it takes us distancing ourselves from those who are constantly negative and who refuse to see that you have changed. Because let's admit it, sometimes the issue is really us. Sometimes it takes, a, like I said, a, taking a hard look at self and admitting, yes, I've made some mistakes. Yes, I'm the common de denominator in all these relationships and I am the problem. And so you have those people who refuse to see that you have grown, refuse to see that you've done the work on yourself or refuse to see that you, do, you are valuable and who you are. And so you feel there's an obligation that you feel because based on who they are to you, you feel obligated to be around these people. Um, they could be family, they could be poor, whoever, whoever they are. You feel this yes. obligation to be there. But talk about give, the, the giving yourself permission to distance yourself from those relationships, even for a season, so you can just solidify truth yes. in yourself. Yes. You can you can heal. Yeah. We the only care that I think I want us to take is not that we are distancing simply because we are fearful and we care and bother and mm -hmm. men are like them because of how they treat me. All of that is true. But if that's become your reason and your driving force, then you are not allowing who you really are, meaning you were made in the image and likeness of God. So you are to love. So we must respond in love, regardless whether others are, are responding in love to us. So we got to find that balance. But we can come back to it a little more. You can, we can discuss it. But we have to also face it. Our emotional wounds, it's no different to physical wounds where we started, how mm -hmm. it can be so painful and hurt. If you had a cut, you receive a wound. What do you do with a wound when you have it? You have to dress it. Dress it. And, and very it often, you have to cover it. Very important. Mm -hmm. Then you'd have to cover it. Why are you covering it? You are protecting it. Right, from more infection. Yes. Because if you leave that wound open around infection, it is only going to get more yeah. infected. Yes. So the wound can be at a point where you need to cover it. And for a season, you got to cover it by getting out of the toxic environment that is infecting that thing and like i say not to run away that's not mm -hmm. a good thing because that creates more negative in the heart but it is a conscious understanding of what is happening and so i need to pull back from that for a little to give my wound a little time to heal you know and know that that's not wrong you don't need to feel guilty about that because i am not done doing the same thing that i don't want done to me that i'm rejecting them no but i'm knowing that i can't handle that right now because i have an infection and you notice it's not they are the problem because why I'm having a problem with them is because I have an infection. Have infection. So therefore, it's not rejecting them. It is my infection, and I'm conscious of my own infection. And because of that now, I am pulling away to go get the wound dress. But you must be getting the wound dress. You must go work on the wound and get it better so that as the wound heals, you can come back in the environment. And the same people doing the same thing in the same way, but it don't affect you anymore. Why? Because the wound is not tender. There is no pus in the wound anymore. The wound has healed. So I can come back even in the toxic environment and you manage the environment. Because now I am pouring out love because I'm not feeling a lack of love and craving it. So I have to get it. Now I'm full. And so mm -hmm. now I have enough to give. So I'm now pouring it out, man, and you're in control of the situation. I tell you the truth. I get excited sometimes when I'm around the people who I know have rejected me and used to reject me and think that 
me no, 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 no have no value and I can get around them now and I see them and I can smile and nod and a couple of them are hypocrites and you know they are being hypocritical because they still, still think you are this and you are that but it doesn't bother me anymore because I know who I am I know what I have done I understand it so I do not allow their external behavior to inform me I have to be informed by the truth that I know so I can live around those who would want to throw the negatives at me but mm. I'm not buying it I'm there it is like my mother you know she was a little stoosh so my mother used to say it is like it, it, no, two statements she used to make she used to say I'm not affected by that it is like pouring water on a duck's back <laughs> you know, so we've got to can accept it that it's like pouring water on a duck's back. You just let it roll off you because you know who you are. Because we man, must just turn and begin to love them. So in as though they are being negative towards you, you can smile and you can treat them right. Be to them because you just know that is because they don't understand. Because some of it is their own insecurities, <laughs> their own fears, why they are treating you that way. Because if they had overcome their fears and their insecurities, they would find it easy to accept you for who you are. So when people cannot accept you for who you are, it is also an indication that they have a problem. Yeah. Because they can't love you. They are suffering from their own insecurities mm -hmm. and their own fears. So we've got to do that sometimes. Go get yourself medicated, man. Pull away from the infections. Cover the wound until the wound heals. And once it's healed, you're back again, ready to take on the world. Wow. Pastor, one of the things I admire most about you is your love for people. You know, that's one of the other than the word that you preach and all of that, I love how you love. And, you know, when you were talking a while ago, the question came to me. I, I know that you've experienced a lot of trial as you have, and as you rejection. continue to say yes to the Lord. Yeah. Yeah. Talk, can you talk about your own experience with rejection? Because sometimes we have a feeling like, because you're a pastor, you don't go through stuff. You know, you're so spiritual and you're above it all. But can you can you talk to us a little bit about your own experience with rejection and how you were able to still love? Because as one of your congregants, one of the members of Feltab, I look on and I say, I like I will hear certain things, Pastor, that I'm sure it comes back to you. I'll hear different people talking and I'm like who oh, and I get so angry, you know, because I'm like, who oh, them smile up with pastor but they don't like him for real and they might talk about yeah. him and how do you how have you how, how what's your what has your experience been and how have you really managed that process wow why do women <laughs> ask difficult questions as always see <laughs> <laughs> no but Lori, that's real because we live in a world that Evil is present, but let's not just say evil now. Where love is what God intended. He made us to love. But because of the rejection by Satan and those who he has under his grasp, then lack of love or being unloving in behavior is what we are thrown at constantly in the world and people are not loving towards us. And this is why we have to deal with this issue of rejection. Because mm -hmm. when they are not loving to us, what are we going to do? If we, are, if we fear it, it will swallow us up. It will destroy us if we fear it. So mm -hmm. we've got to overcome the fear of it so that we do not fear rejection. Now, I have been through some hard places that have had to work the fear out of me because rejection is a fear. And I think we haven't used the word much, but I think if we understand it this way, we can better begin to see what is happening and how to counter it because rejection is a fear. 
it is, it, it is a fear, the fear of rejection because we want acceptance. Mm -hmm. And so anything that's not acceptance, we are afraid of it. So it is the negative side of life that creates a fear. So it is overcoming fear. Whether it is because, why do you fear failing? And a lot of our listeners here, they fear failing. And you say, but everybody fear failing. God, none of us want to fear, don't want to fail. I don't want to fail either. But one thing I can tell you now, I am not afraid of failing. <laughs> you mm. see, I have overcome the fear of failure. So this is why I will take risks. I will do what others won't do or people are afraid to do. Because if, I, if it fails, I bounce back. Um, I overcome the fear of making a mistake. So I'm not as worried about making a mistake. Remind me to make sure we say something about if you have found acceptance, then what are you living for? That's important for us to touch it, to bring some balance. So the fear of rejection drives the behavior and drives everything we do because we are afraid of failing. We are afraid of people talking negative about us. We are afraid of people criticizing us. We don't want nobody cause us. That's why there's a verse of scripture says, be careful when all men speak well of you. Because if you keep living to make sure you satisfy what every individual says and think about you, man, you always on a treadmill, you yeah. will go out of your mind. So you have to break the fear barrier. So how am I able to cope? Breaking the fear barrier. And what is it that breaks fear? It's the opposite of fear which in this concept, context, the opposite of fear is faith, mm -hmm. is faith. So the more I build my faith in the truth of who God says I am, the more I build my faith in the fact that I am accepted by God. And so I'm striving to please God, to maintain the accept, to, to maintain my position, not from fear, because I know I'm already accepted. So my performance is not to get accepted. It is something else that I am after. But the faith in that is what enables me then to cope with the negatives that are thrown at me. The way people see you, the way people think about you, because they have drawn their own conclusions. And I have to accept that they have a right to have their opinion even though their opinion is wrong, their view is wrong, and they are saying all these things about me. So what the scripture says is, you just want to be sure that the things that people say about you is not, not true, true. Mm -hmm. you know? And when you know it's not true, you have to have enough confidence in that knowledge of truth so that you hold on to that and don't despise them. You don't curse them. So that is why it helps me to can love my enemies, embrace my enemies. I know people, I have people around me regularly, people I have to contend with who, like you say, in front a dog is miss a dog, but back a dog, a dog. And yeah. I know that they call me dog, back a dog. And they have all things that they are saying and that they are concluding and they're criticizing and eating. But my job is to focus on being who I am. Who am I? I am like my God. And my God is love. So my job is to love them. So I focus on loving them and don't focus on what they are doing to me. So it's like pouring water on a duck's back. Yes, you just let it run off, man, and keep loving them and treating them right because that's what pleases my father. And I'm living because I want to please him, not because I'm afraid of him, but because I want to fulfill the purpose for which he created me.
and he gave me my assignment. And I cannot fulfill my assignment if I have negative towards people in my heart and in my mind. And so it is faith is the key word I would say that has helped me to survive it and to work through it because I continue to live with it. Sometimes the things I hear people say, and it comes back to me and he says, my goodness, how could they do that? And it's some of the people who you have done the best for, yes. and you hear the concept that they have of you and the things they are saying about you and how them attract you behind your back and go to other people you know, and they can say things about you that is downright not true, even if they perceive that. If you cared for me, you should not even be uttering it or you should come to me and find out because that's the thing to do. But they don't. But how do we respond to it? Faith. Because here is what it says. Faith works by love. And so it is that love of God. The more the love of God fills us because that's who we are are by nature then our faith level rises and our faith level make us fight the fear so we are not fearful and that's what helps me Yuri. i'm not afraid of what people are saying um i i don't like it because it's not a good feeling i don't like when people f speak ill of me and so on it will if i allow it it would cut me and let me come home and hold on my head and don't want to go back out there tomorrow and face the world again. Because especially when you sit where I sit, you get a lot of that from all walks of life, yes. from the public, as some of the public is aware, what I hear people say when I did what I felt I needed to do, yes. when I had to carry a man to save a man's life, but more yes. so to save a revolution in a nation. Yes. They don't understand it and they say all kind of stuff. What holds me together? Faith. Faith. Faith in God, in the truth that I know that I'm doing what is right because you must not suffer for being a busybody, <laughs> for deception. You must not suffer because you lie and you do the negative things. But Jesus says, if you suffer for doing good, count it all joy, for great is your reward. So it is the knowledge of the truth of the love of God and my position of acceptance by God, even in spite of my own flaws and weaknesses, he accepts me anyway. You remember what you girls used to say? I don't know if you girls said it. When I was going to school, girls used to say that. They used to put their hand at their kimbo and they say, well, apart from he likes it so, but something, something, something they used to sing. And if you don't like it, bite it. Bite it. <laughs> you know, bite it. So it is your confidence in the love of God for you and your faith in the knowledge of that love of God that enables us to love the people, to love those who hate you, who use you, who abuse you, who say all manner of evil against you. You just work hard your, to make sure it is falsely. And you see, once that's falsely, man, you smile and nod with them and you can sit around a table with them and you can eat with them and smile because, you know, it's not truth because I'm accepted, man. So if you want to let that eat you out, then be my guest because I'm not losing a night's sleep over it because I know who I am and whose I am and I just continue to do what is right. That's the confidence God wants us to have when we break the rejection barrier. And just to say, it doesn't mean that, some, that there are days you feel it. So you don't just hear it, you feel, oh God, no, not again. Mm. You know, and especially some of the sources that you hear it from, yeah. it, you feel it. And I do feel it. But the thing is, I don't carry it. I try yeah. and drop it as quickly as possible so that I do not let any root of bitterness and anger develop in my heart. Yeah. So I hear it and I think about it a little bit and it comes back to me and I keep talking to myself quickly until I just get it out. And by tomorrow morning, I wake up again and I go on there, man, and like I know nothing. And I don't hold it against them. I'm the same one to embrace them. And people say, how can you do that? Don't you know? Yeah, man. Remember that Jesus 
Could I say this to you? I've often had to say it, that Jesus, in an amazing way, he selected 12 disciples. One of them was Judas. Yeah. And he knew, or he knew that Judas was he Judas, yeah. but Judas was on his team. Yes. I have often had to say, I have had to learn, and still, that I have Judas on my team. And I know that Judas is there. But you have to learn to live with Judas, because mm -hmm. even Judas a have a role to play. <laughs> Judas have a purpose. So yeah. I have to allow Judas to be Judas, you know, but I'm only wise with Judas. Because mm. now you don't turn your back on Judas. Yeah. Because I like to say, if you know someone wants to, sorry to sound so harsh, but if you know someone wants to kill you, I won't buy you the gun. Yeah. And I'm certainly not buying you the ammunition. Right. So if you want to do it, go get your own gun and your mm. own ammunition to do it. So I will keep my eye on Judas, yeah. you know, just to make sure that not so much because I fear Judas, but mm -hmm. I want to protect Judas from mm -hmm. himself because that's that what love is. You see, I want to help to protect Judas because if Judas go and treat me and do things that treat me wrong, Judas will be hurting himself. So I try to help Judas from hurting mm -hmm. himself mm -hmm. by keeping my eye and quickly say, Judah, oh, oh, watch it there, Judy boy. Watch it, Judy. Go down that road instead because yeah. I have to protect Judas from himself. Mm -hmm. So it's only faith and the love of God that is going to enable us to work it through so that we can just love all men and keep loving them in spite of who they are and what they do. We got to do it right. But again, because of this subject, we can only do that if we have broken the back of the fear of failure, mm -hmm. the fear of rejection that then removes insecurities from us. And so now we are in the driver's seat of life. We are not being pushed along. We are really driving. And that's the way to victory, man. And we can handle anything that comes. Would you say, Pastor, it is necessary to confront the Judas? Is it necessary to, okay. Um, so you've been rejected and you've been talked about and mistreated by particular persons. Yeah. And you know but they smile in your face and whatever. Do you, is it necessary to confront those people from time to time? Or is it that you just come to this place of, I am accepted in the Lord. I know who I am. I don't need to defend myself. I don't need to defend my position. How do you feel about that? Wow. Yeah. The truth first position is you've got to know you never have to defend yourself. When you know yourself, know who you are and whose you are, you never have to defend yourself. And more so, here is a principle. Don't take it in a level where you are the authority, like you take me. I am a leader over people. More so for me, when you are an authority, an authority never defends themselves to those under your authority. If you have to defend yourself to those under authority, then they have become the authority. Mm -hmm. who you're defending and very often why are we the feeling we have to defend ourselves because again we feel we have to protect me because my fear is rising and i'm feeling my insecurities are rising so i have to protect it quickly because i have to protect my image hey, jesus made himself of no reputation so absolutely no need to have to defend it but however are there times when you may need to confront it? Very often for me, it's not something I think I need to have to confront. Okay. I just know I deal with it and love them and care for them. But there are times you have to confront it. But here is when you confront it. You have to be careful now because of the love of God that you are not confronting it because I don't like it. Mm. Because you're offending me. And you are treating me and I, I have to make you know that I know that you are a hypocrite. Yay. No, if you have to do that, you have not yet conquered in yourself. But the only time you should address it is when it becomes necessary in the person's best 
interest so that I'm addressing it to Yuri because I have to help Yuri to be the best that Yuri can be. Because if Yuri continues in that way, it will detract from the best of Yuri. So if it is not in a way to help the person, to improve them in their best interest, mm -hmm. don't touch it. And you can't always, if it's somebody you have around you all the time, you can't be touching that every day because you're only irritating them all the time. So you're an irritant. So you got to have the maturity where you can leave it. But there are occasions when you may need to touch it, but you're only touching it in their benefit. best interest. It's for their benefit. Then it's permissible and it is right. Because if you, well, as you said that, and even I'll have Christians, but no, sir, you have to. You notice Jesus never said anything to Lazarus. He never confronted Judas. Lazarus and directly and given him any bad faith to Judas. Mm -hmm. Jesus treated him as he did all the others so that no one around the table could tell only Judas know yeah. <laughs> that Jesus said to him, yeah, what you have to do, go do it. Quickly, yeah. You see, so we've got to understand that love, and that's why then it is love that must drive. And love is the opposite of hate. It's the opposite of rejection. So it takes us to the other level of the spectrum. And so, oh, it just came back to me. And what I said, you should note, when you stretch up from the foundation of rejection and you're reaching up to acceptance line, which is lifeline, really, and you now have life and you are accepted and you, how do you accept it? What do you do? You continue to build and to press along in life and heading upward and forward, but you are not stretching forward to find acceptance why you live, why people live on the minor side of life because it's acceptance they are reaching for. Now, because you are accepted, you are continuing to press forward and reach up not for acceptance, but to pursue the purpose yes. for he who has accepted me has assigned me. So I am continuing to press up, but I'm pursuing purpose. Yes. It is purpose that I'm pursuing. And the beauty now in that pursuit of purpose, because I have overcome the fear of failure and the fear of rejection, I don't have attitude and give off negative vibes in my pursuit of in my pursuit of purpose because I have no fear. Ah. Because here is it, if I fall down in my pursuit of purpose, you know what I'm falling on? Not on rejection, <laughs> I'm falling on love, on acceptance, so I'm cool. It's like, a, it's like the pole vaulter who runs and he goes 20, 30 feet in the air and comes down. The only reason why he has confidence to make the leap is that we knows when he falls, he's falling on a cushion, place. man, soft place, so he doesn't fear falling. Theory, oh. you got to live your life that you don't fear falling. And that will make you take on life, do things. If you fail, you just say, okay, I won't do that again. Okay. <laughs> I've learned from it, but you yeah. get up and move on you as opposed to people. It. They won't try. They won't do it. They're afraid what people are going to say. They're afraid of anybody not speaking well of me. Praise mm -hmm. God. I've had to break all of those barriers, man, but it hasn't been easy. I have suffered the licks for it. Matter of fact, I have scars to prove it. But yeah. when you break the barriers, life becomes worth living and you can confidently yeah. press forward and keep doing what we are supposed to do, not looking behind us and not having issues with people. Because if my progress is continuing to my manner, my speech continues to create problems with people, I have not yet matured in the area. I'm still in process, but I want to work at it quickly so that less and less does my speech my responses create negative responses to people. If they get offended, it's because they are choosing to be offended. It's not because I offended them. Yeah. That's good. I want to go back, Pastor, to 
what we said at the top, the top end when Lucifer was kicked out of heaven and then Adam and Eve were kicked out of the garden because of their disobedience. It was God rejecting, God rejected Lucifer and God rejected Adam and Eve because of their disobedience. But I want, so you might have people who don't have a relationship with Christ who are watching us at tonight or who will watch back at a later time who will say, well, then why would I want to come into this relationship with this God? If I mess up, him will reject me. If I mess up, I, I, don't, have, I don't have that comfort, that soft yes. face because he's so harsh. Talk yes. to those people, Pastor, who may have that mindset. That mindset. Good and, just, what he did, just what it, and talk about what he yeah. put in place for our, yes, for for our activity. Thing. Thank you. Thank you so much for that, Yuri. We want to say to all such persons that that was the beginning. That's what caused the evil to have come. Mm -hmm. That's why man was rejected because of his susceptibility and yielding to that evil. But because God is love, and he doesn't want to reject. He is only love. He can only seek the best welfare of his creatures. So that even when we look back, let me just spare a word here for even in the Old Testament, people see it and says, boy, how God judged them, how God did this. God only did it, not because of his anger to destroy, but because of his desire to correct and to draw because yes. of love. God is fully love. He doesn't have an ounce of anything but love. So that even when he chastises or what we would call in the Old Testament, we see it as punishment, mm -hmm. it is always to get people to do right. It is never to destroy them because God says, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but that the wicked turn. So it is always to draw them back to do what is right. So it's the nature of God. And so what he did, because he knew what Adam would have done, the word of God says that God made a provision for us. And this is why Jesus Christ came, which those who are not as familiar with the Bible, Adam, the first Adam in the garden in Genesis 1, and he messed up. But Jesus came, and the scripture calls him the second Adam, because he would start a new beginning for mankind. And so Jesus came as the second Adam, but he did not mess up. Where Adam failed, Jesus succeeded. He overcame. And so then he in his overcoming, he satisfied the just penalty for our rejection of God. He satisfied that. So he was rejected for us so that we no longer have to be rejected. So that now when we come to him, we are accepted. And once you are accepted, you can't be unaccepted. You are in so he accepts us now in the love of God, by the love of God, and we are now become children of God. We are accepted. And so God only deals with us from a position of acceptance. So that when we, let's say, mess up, it's no longer, and this may be strange for some, we call it sin. No, no, no. When the believer mess up, it's no longer sin. Yeah. Wow. Wow. We make mistakes hmm. because sin and evil becomes, and my sin matter was already dealt with in Christ. He has paid the penalty. So therefore, it is my error of judgment. And when someone makes a mistake, you treat them differently than someone who has a heart intent to do evil. Like I read one, a guy who once wrote, I think it was Sidlow Baxter, who wrote about sanctification. And he mentioned in his book that a mother in a cold country, they lived in a cold country. The mother came home, came home. And when she came home, there were two children, let's say. One child for one family. The mother came home and because it was cold outside and the child wants to give mommy a warm slippers 
the child went and threw the slippers in the fireplace to warm it for mommy and burnt it up. Mm -hmm. Now, should that child be scolded? No, because no. the heart no. intent, motive was right, but no. they did the wrong the action. Wrong. Yeah. But you have another child who mommy spoke to me and I'm angry at, mom, at mommy. And so to spite mommy, he took mommy's slippers and it's threw terrible. it in the fire. Mm. Motive, different. So mm. when we are accepted by God, our wrong action, the heart is right. So God accepts you anyway. It does not affect your positioning in God. You are accepted and he gives, he enters into a covenant agreement with you. I have accepted you. I will never ever reject you so you never have to worry about rejection again because the price the penalty for my rejection has already been dealt with so you never have to worry about rejection again if i even fail i'm still accepted he simply pulls me up and says son no 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 that's not the way and he said sorry daddy and he says okay son run along man because you live on the lifeline, on the platform, on the, found, the, the new foundation of acceptance. Mm -hmm. But what I found that most people do, even Christians, when they came in their relationship with God, they did not start over again mm -hmm. on the new platform. They still live on the rejection platform and operating from it but they added Christ as a building block. A little love was put in the building that I am already building. And mm -hmm. so that's why they're still suffering the rejection, living on the principles of rejection, but have a little bit of the love of God. And so the internal conflict and struggles are there. Whereas yes. what the Lord says is, when you come to me, I am not a block in the building that you are chief. already constructing. I am the chief, chief cornerstone upon which you must build. Yes, so you Lord must Lord. leave that platform completely and start afresh on the platform of acceptance. Mm -hmm. The more people do that, they will break the fear of rejection, of failure, of insecurities, of jealousy, and all the negatives that flow from rejection because I start again planted on the foundation of acceptance. So I just build towards purpose, know that I can never ever be rejected, so I live free. And I'm happy because I'm free, man. I don't worry about people who don't like me, who don't do that. I just love them anyway and treat them right and keep doing what I'm supposed to do. They criticize me. I say, Mwah, but I keep on doing what I have to do because I cannot stop doing what I need to do simply because you are uncomfortable. Yeah. If you have to be uncomfortable, I don't like your being uncomfortable, but I cannot not do what I ought to do simply because you are uncomfortable. And then you go and criticize me and cuss me and I stop functioning. No, man, you keep pressing and just got to say, I'm so sorry. I'm sorry that that creates an offense for you. Oh boy, very, very sorry. I don't mean it. I don't want that. But we have a saying. A man's got to do what a man's got to do. So you got to just keep pressing and live with confidence. And that is it. So I say to your, to your viewers is, come on, guys, you can live free of rejection and all the negatives that come with it. But you have to make a conscious, deliberate decision change the platform of your life from negative to positive and by speaking to yourself the truth that you have worth and value you don't strive for it you have it and be grateful for it and mm -hmm. live because you have it and that's why you work because you have worth and you don't work to gain worth
And that's how confidence comes for living. Yes. Yes, Pastor. Bless you. A lot of us have the, ex have the experience of coming into the relationship with Christ, but using him as a building block. Just like you said, so we're building on top of the insecurity and the rejection and what we That's know right. to be what we've known to be truth all our lives. That's right. And so the practical, because I want us to talk about the practical things yes. of unseating this root of rejection, is to what I'm hearing from your pastor is to make Christ the chief cornerstone, to make him the base. Once we come into that base. relationship, That's right. he's the foundation. So it's like we're starting all over again. Over. That's right. Born again is like a brand that's new it. baby. It's brand Please. new. Absolute. And that's what most Christians are not doing. Yes. You know, they hear it, but they are not practically doing it. They're not making a fresh start by mm -hmm. throwing out and condemning everything that was and make the complete shift and yes. start again. That's why yes. the scriptures use this parallels like newborn babes. You know, mm -hmm. that you, you like a newborn babe now, you're starting again to learn how to live free of fear on yes. this side. Because the two key things over on the, the rejection foundation is pride and fear. And that's yes. what produces all the negatives. But over on this platform now, it is to be humility and faith because I'm trusting this God of love who loves me. And so those become the things that, on, that I build on on this new platform. So it yes. has to be a conscious, deliberate choice that we make and yes. maintain the choice by choosing to stay on the acceptance platform. Right. So it's accepting truth through mm -hmm. digesting the word of God, being yeah. in the presence of the Lord, coming into the house of God, not forsaking the assembling of the brethren. Absolutely. Um, and then talk briefly now, so, so word, presence, what about the, 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 the whole thing of deliverance? Do you think that's yes. important too, Wonderful. Pastor? Yes. Now, that is touching something else because whereas all of us are born on the rejection platform since Adam, mm -hmm. it, and it's only in Christ that we are born again on the acceptance platform. But because we were born on, on, that, on, that, on that platform, we are prone to all the negatives, the minus factors that we have spoken of. And that's natural. That's natural. But because of the master who controls that rejection platform, we can move from a point of what is just normal fear of failure and rejection, and we give into it so much that we form an agreement with the master of that platform mm -hmm. that he now, I would say, is like he gives us an injection that energizes the fear of failure or the insecurities that we have so that those insecurities and fears and hate and anger and rebellion and jealousy and all that is is, is no longer just a natural disposition because of where I was born but I know take on the power of the spirit of the owner of that platform mm -hmm. so I get now reinforcement in my negatives. Yes. When that happens, then I need another level of freedom from it. Mm -hmm. Not just what the blood of Jesus Christ did, just to be forgiven and to make the change and start a new on the next platform. But I now need also to break free from the dominant control of the power of the, of the master of that platform, that foundation on which I have lived all my life. He has me now trapped, my mind, everything, and he is now driving me. So I now need what we call in church circles, 
deliverance. So it means that not only is the, the choice that I'm making to shift, but I also need to specially ask for to break the power of this intense fears that I have. Yes. And how do you know that it is no longer just a natural fear that all of us have of rejection mm -hmm. is when it is at a level where it is almost what we could call a compulsion mm -hmm. that I just can't help it. I am always angry, I'm latching out, I'm hitting, and all the effort that I am making, even though I have crossed over and think that I'm living on the acceptance platform, yes. but I am still driven by this, then I must begin to say there is a possibility now that there is a greater power of control in this area that I also need to be freed from. And that's where prayer for deliverance becomes necessary because I don't want to scare people, but the truth of it is there is not just my human soul that is dealing with this issue of insecurity, but I also have a spirit an evil spirit that is assisting that weakness in me. So it's driving me with a compulsion. So all my natural efforts, I cannot seem to overcome it. And any habit behavior we have that, it, that with all our efforts, even though we pray and commit ourselves to Christ and trying to obey the word, but we cannot overcome it it is a good indication that that needs special prayer to break a spiritual power that is at work in that area of my life as well. And once that happens, then I usually find it's like once I break that power, because the complete work of what Jesus did on the cross, not only took away our sins, mm -hmm and forgave us of it and brought us into love. But it says that the son of man have destroyed the works of the devil and he has destroyed principalities and powers. So he also broke the power of evil that we could be free from the power of evil itself and also from the effects of evil. So we have a responsibility to apply discipline to deal with the effects of evil, but we need the supernatural power of God to break the power of the evil. So we got to handle it on both planes. And Christ has already won the victory on both planes, yes. but in our application, we have to equally deal with it on both planes. You know, so that we really can conquer this thing, man, and be free of it. So deliverance becomes necessary in such cases of compulsion, compulsive behavior, and we can't seem to lick it. So I continue after years of being a, a, a Christian, I still can't get on with most people. I still get depressed. I still keep feeling that I am not good enough. Then come on now accept that I might need to go get special prayer to break the power of this thing off of my life. Yeah. Thank you so helpful. much, Pastor. Very helpful. Pastor, as we close tonight, I just want you to give those who have suffered from rejection, suffering, some people are going through it right now, you know, and though we're talking about it, it just is such a reality for them right now. Encourage those people, Pastor, who are facing rejection right now and then pray for us, please, as we close. Good. Really just want to say to you as you're going through it that we understand it. We have all been there. So none of us are exempt. So do not condemn yourself as if you, something is wrong with you particularly. No. What is happening to you is common to all people all of us have had to go through it. So what we say to you then is simply come to God because the power to break it 
is only God who can give you the power to break it. You can try hard and you can make some ground. You can achieve some things, but the truth is it's limited what you can do just by your own self effort. If you really want to be totally free of it, then you need to connect to God. But no, you can overcome. You were designed to overcome. You were built for victory, not for defeat. So you do not have to live with fear of any sort. You do not have to live with failure of any sort. You can conquer all of it. You can overcome every, every type and expression of rejection and fears of every form. You can overcome it. I assure you, I have overcome it. I know scores who have overcome it. We have helped thousands to overcome it. And millions around the world have overcome it. Therefore, you can overcome it. Be confident you can overcome it. But it begins with just a hard posture of humility that's just acknowledging it first. That boy, I have the problem and I want to deal with it. That's where it all begins. Once you acknowledge that you have the problem, you want to be free of it, then you simply come to the God of the universe who loves you with a perfect love and who built you to live in his love and say to him, Lord, help me. And once you just utter that word, Lord, help me, is present to help you. You need nothing more. You don't have to meet any criteria. You don't have to become perfect. You simply need to say, Lord, help me. And if you ask him to help you, he says, I will be there and I will help you. And so if you want to pray with me now and to just ask him to help you and begin the process, it's not the end of a process, it's the beginning. But every journey of a thousand miles, they say, it begins with the first step. So make this first step to say, Lord, help me. I want to be free. I want to find the place of acceptance and live in it. And he will help you. So pray this prayer with me. And then I'm going to pray for you. So just say, eternal God, I come to you today. I realize that you have made the way that I can overcome rejection and all the negatives that come with it that has dominated my life and have created so many problems in my relationships, in my career path, in my ability to be truly successful. Father, I acknowledge it. Say to him now, Lord, forgive me. Yes, Lord, help me. I invite you to come into my life and to help me to become like you, the person you created me to be. I thank you for hearing my prayer. I thank you for answering, Lord, in the name of Jesus. That simple, sincere prayer initiates a process. Now you have a responsibility to continue in the direction that you want to go. It's like a journey. It, when you leave, you have to decide where you want to go and turn your mind and your thoughts in that direction and get up from where you are and move in that direction and keep on going in that direction. If you don't, then the desire to get to your destination by itself will never get you there. You got to get up now and go. So start moving and going towards it. I'm going to pray for you that the Lord will give you the strength that you need and enlarge your capacity that you will be able to take the journey and succeed because you were built for success and not for failure. You were made for victory and not for defeat. You can overcome anything and everything. Believe it and it will work for you. It is what you believe that's the key. So let me pray for you. Eternal God, in the powerful name of the Lord Jesus Christ, your son who you sent into the world to break the power 
of evil to remove and destroy the works of evil, the effects of it on our lives. We thank you for that, Lord. And now I pray for every person listening, and particularly for those who have just made a commitment to move in the direction of freedom, from the negatives, from the rejection and the fears that come with it. Lord, I pray for strength. I pray for grace. I pray for undergirding. I pray for a rich sense of your presence to come to them right now where they are. Let them realize you are a personal God who takes personal interest in the personal affairs of their personal lives because you care you love us with a perfect love so let your love fill the hearts right now let them sense your presence the weight of your presence and reach out to you in simply praying because prayer connects us from the natural world realm to the spiritual realm. So help them to echo and the prayer sincerely from the heart and they will find that you are there. So draw near to them now, I pray. And those who are particularly oppressed by the forces of evil and cannot seem to make the breakthrough. I thank you for the power of the Holy Spirit that you have given to us and the authority in my voice that as they hear me now, I release the presence of the power of the Spirit of God upon their lives, into their lives. And I say to the Spirit, of rejection, to spirits of fear, of worry, of anxiety, of the fear of failure, of insecurities, and all the spin-offs, I take authority over you in the name of Jesus, and I break your power from over their lives. You will not continue to hold these men and women and youth into under the grasp of your power for Jesus have defeated you and so in his name we defeat you so we say to you loose them right now we break your power from their lives go from their lives come out of their bodies free them now in the name of Jesus and I now speak the peace of God the peace of God to come upon them now the calm assurance and a sense of the love of God to envelop their lives. So receive the peace of God and the love of God is your portion. He loves you, he loves you, he loves you, and he will help you to overcome and be the best that you can be. That is just to live love as he is love. Peace, peace. Peace be yours. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Pastor. Bless you. It's been a pleasure. Thank you so much for the privilege. It is an honor to be with you and to be shared and interviewed by such charm and beauty. My dear, go for it. When you got sick, you got sick, girl. So keep <laughs> doing what you're doing. We really just thank God for you and honor you and appreciate you, girl. That's the grace upon you. Keep doing it. It's useful and helpful to others. That's yes. what living is about and loving, just helping others Help to be God. their best. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you so much. Thank you so much, Pastor. I know you wanted to sleep, <laughs> but you spared the time tonight, and I really, really appreciate it. I'm sure all of our viewers tonight have gotten so much, you know, and this will, this will be shared with different people and it's going to be so far reaching, Pastor. So we really, really appreciate you taking the time to share with us tonight and teach us. We really, really appreciate you. Thank you so much for your sacrifice, sir. My pleasure. Honor you. God bless you too. And thank you. thank you so much, everyone, for coming on tonight. The Lord bless and keep you. May he cause his face to shine on you and be gracious to you. Thank you so much for joining us and we'll see you soon. Bye.